All right, so today we're going to head down to the Norfolk Broads and we've got to go and have a look at the pump because we've got a team today coming from the water board who are going to service the pump and have a look at it and just make sure that it's in good condition. The pump's used all year round to keep the marshes free of water so that we can graze animals on there and grow silage over the season. So it's really important that the pump's working and is in good condition and we always try to get it serviced every year or every other year um, when we can get the people in to have a look at it. So we'll have a look at it and um, see what it's like. Is that a good sign of so that bit of pipe would have been put in properly? Yeah. This would all be shuttered flush. And right. You just, just have a hole. Right, right. So, it's, so the water's coming back then from the wall. Is that right? Bloody hell. Okay, so now the men are, are going to put this um, attachment down with a merlot and they're going to pull out the pump and just have a look at the pump and, and service it. So we're, we're just trying to hook the pump on, uh, hook the chain onto the pump and then once the chain's on the pump we can then lift it out with a merlot and see what's wrong with it. This is the pump which pumps all the water off the marshes for the cattle and sheep. So it's really important that it keeps everywhere dry during the winter and also, well, during the summer months as well. We don't want them too wet. There she comes. And there she is. How old is it then, sorry? Um, 1996. Oh, same year I was born. <laughs> yeah, 25. <laughs> it's doing well. It's the um, vacuum pump, do sorry. Uh, sorry. We're just trying to just draw the foil out, basically. Right. We said earlier about the sort of yeah, early warning, if you like. Right. All right, so we're back at the farm, I think. The pump's okay, we just had a look at it. The seal's all alright on the pump, so he's going to be alright for a little while longer yet. Although we need to look at, from what the, the crew were saying, we need to look at maybe a new pump some somewhere down the line or an, and a new system because the concrete chamber's getting old, it's cracked, it's leaking, which could become even more of a problem in the future. So, it, it's, But it's <laughs> the downside is it's, it's very expensive to get a new system, so we, we need to look at a grant scheme maybe to help finance it because a new pump and a new system is probably well over £100,000 maybe even like 150,000 for a new system. So um, w w the farm can't spend that much money on the, on the marshes, you know, f to, to feed the cattle and the sheep. You know, we just won't get that money back. So if we could have some sort of a scheme or a grant um, to help us out with that, that would be great. And it will also help the local village down the, further down the river, which is Belton. So, um, and it will help the local environment as well. Uh, something else as well we'd like is a different type of pump. We'd like a screw pump which is like a corkscrew and, and it, it's, it's a bit more environmentally friendly, it doesn't kill fish and eels and uh, apparently they use a lot less power because they're, they're a slower pump which operate you know, a bit more consistently rather than an intermittent pump, pump which we've got at the moment which is a flight pump made in Sweden and the flight pump just comes on intermittently but very very hard so it's using a lot of power whereas a, a Dutch screw pump would be you know, a, a lot more efficient and we wouldn't be using as much electricity which will save the farm some money and it's also better for the environment as well so it's a it's a win-win. Um, so that's what's going on down at the Broads and as you can see behind me I've just got the dump trailer on the back, the new one we got the other day and we're planning this afternoon I empty in the cattle yard of muck and taking our first few loads out onto the stubble so that we can keep it out in the field until we can then spread it in February because of course all the rules have changed now. We normally do spread in February time, springtime um, later on getting towards March before we put the crops in so touch words the autumn not being allowed to um, muck spread in the autumn hasn't hasn't been too much of a problem here on this farm but I know of many other farmers who have had big problems with the new muck spreading regulation here in the UK so we've got, we've got some muck here we'll get it out of the yard and cut it into the field. <laughs> The 
AS Marston's carried, I'd say, the best part of what I normally get into the Richard Weston, which is about you know 10, 12 tonne of muck. Um, there's probably, I'd say, you know, a good 10 tonne in there. I've got a good five to six bucketfuls there. That's plenty for what we want. The only thing I might get at some point is if I can find another AS sticker, I might just put another one on the back where there used to be used to be one over there somewhere. Um, but yeah, I'm really, really happy that it's um, carried the same amount I'd normally take. Before we drop the muck into the field, I was just going to uh, head over to the field, open the gate so I can just get through there with the tractor. But I just got my bike back, it's just been serviced. Again, it had another set of brake pads on it, so that's all good now. Um, but we're just going to whip to that field, open the gate so we can chuck the muck on there. We've got the turnips coming up on there as well, so you've got to be careful like where we put the muck. You don't want to crush too much of the crop. So this is what this field's looking like. Stack the bales just at the end over there. I've got the turnips coming up as well. Oh, it's bumpy on these headings. I've got my straw bales over there. Keep bringing them in over the winter. But we've got a couple of turnips coming up here. Yeah, the, the only problem is the pigeons will start eating these as they get a little bit bigger. It happens every year, pigeons are the rooks. But they are coming up, they are coming out of the ground. They had a, bit, a good bit of moisture when they went in. And if you just look there, there's still a bit of moisture in the ground, which is really important so that they can come up and uh, we're going to have to put some nitrogen on this year, a bit of fertiliser to get, get them growing really, otherwise there won't, there won't be any turnips because so much goodness has been taken out of the ground from the, the bumper yield we had on the barley this year, so time will tell, time will tell. And meanwhile in the shed where we've got the barley in the last few weeks, it's still sitting here because uh, there's this lorry driver sh shortage, so we're going to have to wait, well, I don't know how long, another few weeks yet until we can get rid of the barley and uh, sell it off for a good price. All right, I'm gonna go and cut this muck, but uh, I've gotta to wrap today's video up. So um, find out in the next video, will we get rid of the barley? Will we sell it? What sort of a condition is the pump in? We'll get the report back from the uh, team today. They'll find out what's wrong with the pump. And then also we've got the McCormick behind me. Is that ever gonna get fixed? And is the 135 gonna be restored in time to get it back for autumn? Find out in the next video. Thank you very much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed, and I'll catch you in the next one.